right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another amazing Rugger's Edge webinar. I'm really excited to have Scott from Ruck Films with us again for another webinar to really walk um, high school students and families through uh, the process of putting together, you know, really influential and helpful uh, video and film um, that college coaches will respond to. Um, so I'm going to pass it over to Scott briefly just to let him introduce himself um, and make sure that you all understand, um, you know, what his background is, and then we'll kind of dive into some of the questions that have been getting sent in, um, and as well as the folks that are on live for you to go ahead and ask some questions live and get those answered. So Scott, yeah, if you want to tell us a little bit about your background and your experience um, with looking at film and, and things like that, that'd be wonderful. Yeah, hi, uh, I'm Scott, Scott from Scotland, easy to remember. Um, so yeah, I played rugby professionally for 17 years, um, mainly in France. Um, Played 10 years for Scotland. I had a, a tour for the British and Irish Lions. Um, and then I got into coaching in France after I retired from rugby. Um, married an American. She brought me back to California uh, and I've been coaching ever since. So I've been involved in rugby for um, nearly 30 years. Uh, I also had a stint doing some, uh, some editing, some video editing at a studio in Santa Monica when I lived there for a while, because um, it's something I really love. Um, <clears throat> and so I just thought, you know, starting Ruck Films would be, you know, a good segue to do two of the things I love the most, which is video editing and um, and rugby. So that's why we started Ruck Films. And I also presently work for San Diego Legion, which is the professional MLR team here. Um, been forwards coach now for four years. This is my fifth season with them. Um, and the reason that I, I kind of wanted to get into the, or to help some of the, the, the young kids is because when we had the, we have the collegiate draft every year and, um, some of the videos I was receiving, I was just, uh, you know, they were, they were below par, let's say that. Um, but so I just thought maybe I could try and help. So I put together a few, I reached out to a few of the college kids and asked them if they wanted to highlight reel and put them together. And that's, that's when, that's when the idea started that we, you know, obviously we, we want to make money, we're a business, but we want to help kids get into rugby because it's a it's a it's a sport I love. Like I said, I played for 30 years and everything that's given to me and my family, um I, I want to kind of pass that on and share that with other people too. So yeah, been involved for a long time and I'm just I want to get out and I want to help people um enjoy what I've enjoyed. Yeah. So great. I mean to take some stuff off. Um and I, I put this in the um kind of prep email to you, but I, I'm curious what your philosophy is or what your thought is like, what, what, um, what is the main goal of a highlight film? You know, so like if I'm a high school student and I'm thinking about it, what, what is the end goal supposed to be, you know, so that it kind of helps drive or gives them a purpose. You know, it's like, if I'm working with a student with an essay, we understand what is the point of that essay, right? It's supposed to allow a college to understand who this person is. So like what, you know, if you had to wrap it up or if there's an easy way to kind of explain, how would you direct a student to think about not only one highlight film, but kind of like if they're making multiple ones or over the course, you know, we've got a 10th grader on, how would a highlight film in their 10th grade season, you know, what should that be? What should 11th grade, things like that. Kind of what is the focus of what a highlight film should be and what should it do? Yeah, well, for me, a, a highlight reel is basically to get the coach that you're, you know, with the team that you're trying to sign, you're trying to get the coach interested in in who you are as a player. So it's not having fancy replays and slow motions. It's it's just showing pos, uh, position-specific skills. Like, so, for example, your prop, you, you want to make sure you get some scrums in there because a coach wants to see how you scrum. And then, obviously, you've got the main things, defense and attack. Everyone wants to see that. But... The, the, the one thing I would say is you just got to, it's not about being a fancy Instagram. It's just getting a coach interested in you so that then he'll go, then he'll make the, make the next step to have a look at like a full game to see if you can, if you have the skills that you need. Um, so you're basically, all you're doing is you're showing if you can, if you can tackle, how you can carry, um, if your position specific skills, so front rows, can you scrum? Second rows, are you good aerially in the air? Can you jump? back rows same thing with your defense attack so it's just um making sure that when a coach sees this and he doesn't want an eight ten minute clip uh highlight reel he, all he really needs this is my 
my opinion and, and you know like I say I've been coaching now for over 10 years like I don't want to watch eight minutes I want within three minutes within two minutes I've made up my mind whether uh, mm-hmm. a player is is good enough and then that's when then you move on to that's why I like to with mine I have pdfs with with rock films we have a pdf and everything's embedded within the pdf so as well as a highlight reel you have links to the full games because as soon as a coach is, is interested in you, then he'll then he'll probably go and have a look at the the, the full games to to make sure that you've got you know the stuff that's not really coachable. You, you know your work rate around the field, um, how you are with your with your fellow players. Um, you know if if you know if you run in a certain shape and attack that you can play within that shape. So all that sort of stuff is the is the next level. But the highlight reel is, is basically designed to get a coach excited and interested in and pursuing you as a player. Yeah, I love I love that. And and I really want to reiterate to those students that um a highlight reel, like I I sometimes explain it, it's it's like a trailer to a movie. You know, so like it's supposed to, you know, or like an appetizer. It's getting you interested, but it, it you know, as soon as like, oh my gosh, like I didn't get a chance to show this, this, or this. And then they do start making it longer and longer and more slow motion or more this or that. And um, having to explain to students, you'll have the opportunity to show more of those things in those like full games. Um, but really the highlight reel, I love what you, you know, two minutes, three minutes, max gets them interested. Hopefully you then have a conversation or you, you know, continue the um, kind of that exploration with those coaches as it as it keeps going so that's really good um if you can so let's say we've got a brand new you know student they're you know they're they're kind of either sophomore junior they're heading into the spring season um I don't know like at this point like never had any film what are some key tips for ensuring that they could get good clips to you Anything yeah, that's you would that's want them the, to know. yeah, that's that's the kind of hard part because <laughs> I, I understand that not everyone's um, you know film savvy, rugby savvy, but I think there's there's two two ways to look at it. Hopefully, whoever's coaching you, they're filming the game in a in a kind of wider a wider angle so they can see all the movement and stuff. And then as a parent, I would suggest just getting tight to your child um, so that when, when we do come to edit stuff. You know, you, you get good quality. Uh, it's not grainy. You're not zooming in. Uh, like s- sometimes I have to zoom in after the fact using the software we have, but it gets a little bit grainy depending on how far you are away. So like I say, for a highlight reel, especially, you really want to get pretty tight to your child so we can see how he tackles. We can see where he puts his head, how he uses his footwork into contact. Same with scrum and line out, like his arm position. Is he making hits? Uh, correctly his footwork all that sort of stuff you, you you can get to see if you go a little bit tighter in so yeah as a parent I would suggest filming as tight as you can not too tight but tight enough that you can see the, the whole tackle the whole line the whole scrum the whole carry um, and then then it's much easier to to co or clip out and, and make into a highlight reel and obviously when you come to watching the whole game then obviously you want to see a little bit more what's happening around the play um, when then when the play is going on over here, what's this player doing? Is he getting back to his feet quickly? Because that's the sort of things that coaches are looking for. You know, when you make a t- tackle, how quickly do you get back up, back into the game? When you make a carry, how quickly do you get back up, back into the game? If if your buddy drops a ball, how do you react to that? Do you do you give him a tap on the back? Do you do you shout at him? All that sort of stuff. These are the things that coaches are really looking for to see how you are as a player. And and that's another thing we try and do on the on the CV. We'll, there's, you, there's an option to have a photo. But there's also an option to have um, your child doing like a 30 second introduction of himself. And I think it really helps as a coach to, to hear a person, a player speak. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's just, you know, I agree. Yeah. Name, position and, and what you think you can bring to a team. And, and that 30 second clip could be the difference between a coach picking you or someone else in the exact same position. So all that sort of stuff is 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 the thing that coaches are looking for. The stuff that's not coachable, you know, um, and that's um, so. Yeah, I would say that's a big thing to, to to think about is doing that little thirty second intro in your um, in your highlight, not in your highlight reels, but in the whole the the CV that you put together for a coach. 
Great. I mean, something else I would recommend too, that'll help make this part easier. What Scott's talking about is, you know, I, I often get um, families where, uh, you know, their child, like they decided to play rugby and, and parents have like no idea what rugby is. They're like, why did my child pick this one sport that neither of us understand? So it might be really helpful to, um, you know, for yourself, if you're going to be the one helping with the film, um, to kind of do a little bit of homework as well, right? Kind of watch some some games, right? Watch if you don't if you don't understand sevens or and now we're watching fifteens. Um, watch watch those games so you understand. That there there tends to be a pattern. Like after a while, you obviously been watching your child play for a while. You would know that if we zoomed in for a scrum, more than likely, if your child is an eight man, do they normally? like like a pick and go right then you kind of know to stay there or if you know that okay they're probably going to go wide you would know that to kind of zoom out as the ball's coming back out but there's a pattern to play of if it's coming all the way out to the wing you can start seeing that back line will reset up to the other side because now we don't have any any more space on this near sideline so the more you get a little more comfortable and, and i tell some parents too like especially if they're a freshman or sophomore practice getting film even if you're not going to use that film later you know, you, you, you might get some like kind of like a junk game where you're, you know, your child's playing a, a team and they, they're beating them 105 to zero. That may not be a game you're going to send to a coach later, but you're getting practice of like, how, how do you, you know, zoom in on that scrum or that line out or whatever the case may be, especially if you don't really understand rugby and it's a new sport for you. Um, getting some of that practice earlier on will help by the time if we are getting film as a junior, um, that's probably going to be a more critical time, you know, to get film to someone like Scott. And then at that point, you're a little more savvy with how to get in and do that. So I love that kind of understanding um, those different nuances about seeing, you know, where you may not know, like where their feet are, where their hands are and things like that. So that's really good. Um, so let's say you've got, um, Either they use someone like you who can, you know, kind of organize it together, or let's say you've got some do-it-yourselfers. Um, any tips? Um, they they've got some good clips together, um, and they want to put it together. Like, what are some recommendations on that? Would you just kind of like game by game, you know, clips from game versus red team, and then the next five clips are game versus B team, you know, or whatever? Like, would you do it chronologically? Like, what do you think would be the most helpful if you were a college coach looking at that film? Yeah, I think I think the best thing to do is, um, or, or what we do anyway, is the, the first thing you want to do is grab the, the the coach's attention. So you put a lot of the highlights, you know, some tries, some some really big tackles, um, in, in just like a, a 10, 15 second intro to the player, and then the best thing to do is 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 have titles where you so you. You're not just jumping from attack to defense to set piece. You, you, you've got the first thing you'll have for me would be position specific. So let's say, for example, it's a fullback. You know, I would like to to do footwork and maybe some aerial skills because that's two of the big things that they're they're meant to be good at. Um, and then once you've brought that in, then you then you would skip to maybe attack, defense, and then again finish with something a little bit special. To, again to capture the coach's attention so it's it's really a good idea um you don't want to jump around and do right there's a tackle here then there's a lineup over here then back to a tackle and then a, a carry just keep it together so the coach can see right this is a defense so then if he wants to bring in his, his defensive coach you bring him in have a chat um so it's better to, to cut all the different segments out and start with something good position specific attack defense and then maybe contact skills and then finish with something a little bit um special at the end just to finish would be my that's what we like to do and that's kind of great i think that's the easiest way for a coach to, to watch a highlight reel no i think i think i'm starting to see more of that and you're right i think it's a lot easier to wrap i used to all, always get um the way i described before where it was like here's the first game of the season clips and then here's second game and then here's third, you know, that sort of thing. And it would be a little discombobulating of seeing, wait, wait, what's happening? Like you're running with the ball, but now we're kicking and then now we're scrumming. Like it just kind of jumped all over the place. So I think one of the things I tell students all the time is if you're going about this whole recruitment, uh, you know, process, the best way you can be recruited is to make yourself an easy recruit. 
you know, make it easy for them, make it easy for them to see how talented you are. You know, don't kind of don't make them work so hard to figure out, can you scrum? Can you jump? Can you lift? You know, those kinds of things. Um, just, yeah, just, I've just, had just, sorry, can, some, can I, oh yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. Just quickly on that, like no. a coach can tell after two or three tackles, two or three carries, you know, he, he'll see straight away what your technique is. Um, he, he'll be able to tell straight away if you, if you're good at it, you know, and, then once he's decided, that's why it's it's difficult sometimes because you, you might think it's a great tackle, but maybe you're taking it on the back foot. You always want to have your best tackles in there. So tackles where you're winning the game line. Um, and so, so the game line is basically an imaginary line where if I'm getting the ball, I want to try and get beyond that line. And if I'm defending the guy with the ball, I want to tackle him beyond that line as well. So you're always when you're looking at tackles and attack, you always want to put your best in, even if it's only three or four, rather do that than put in a tackle where you're, he's maybe run over the top of you and you've just managed to grab him. Um, that, that's the sort of thing I would say that sometimes that with the films, because we, we have a package where we let um, the, the, the parents or the player clip out their own clips. Uh, and a lot of them come back and it's, it's the tackles like this that you don't really want to put in because that you just all the coach wants to see is that you know how to do it technically and once he's got that he's like fine right this kid can tackle this player can tackle we'll, we'll, like and then and then he's coachable after that and the coach knows i can make him better um so that's that's one thing i would say is just be, be, be careful as to what you put in and make sure it is your highlights even if there's only a couple just make sure they're good ones and, and don't put anything in there that the coach is going to say oh hold on a minute so so if, um, and I think that's a great point, like let's say you've got a student um, maybe is just at a program that it's not really developed, but they're a really talented student. Um, and they're they're like, I don't actually know if these are good tackles or good lineouts. Um, I mean, you kind of, you describe the, the way a good tackle should look. Um, are there any other things you normally see where you're like, Oh, like that, that's usually not a great clip, but I see it a lot. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So the tackle one of kind of like those really passive kind of catch tackles, anything else? I have an idea, but I want to see what you have too. Um, yeah, a lot. Of, some of the stuff there's uh, players will send me um, like a good bit of footwork where they'll get beyond the ball, but then they, then they throw the ball away. And and I'll try and clip it the best. So I'll get the footwork, footwork part in there and then just kind of cut it so that the, the coach doesn't really see. But then as a coach, I know if I see someone doing great footwork and then I don't see the finish, I'd like, he's probably dropped the ball. So um, yeah, just making sure there's there's not, there's no, if, if you beat someone, make sure that you actually finish, the, go to ground and ball, good ball placement. Or if you do an offload, make sure the actual, the, the intended receiver gets the ball because stuff like that are the things that make coaches have second thoughts. Yeah, I see a lot of like those picky, like you're, you're getting tackled and you just like throw the ball away. And luckily your support was there and they were able to get it. And maybe it was a try, but like the actual set, the actual pass wasn't great. Yeah. You know, technically like it wasn't that sound or things where they're like getting tackled. They just kind of like, you just see that ball kind of squirt out and you're like, what, what happened? You know? So it's like that, that's at the bottom of a rock, they're making decisions and you're thinking about how did they think through that? You know, and, and they made that decision to just like throw the ball up in the air, or, you know, <laughs> whatever that is. And they choose to put that in a highlight and that's not not great, not great, not something I would recommend. Um, what, uh, what would you say about students um, that intercut some of the rugby skills with just individual clips? Is there anything you think is helpful like of, of them like in a gym or doing kind of workouts or is that kind of not happening anymore? Um, any thoughts about that? Yeah, I, I, I mean, if, if you don't have any clips like, Let's say it, it's a scrumming session where you're, where you're actually doing some good work. I wouldn't put, you know, bench press or squats or any gym work in there or speed because you can put that in in the in the CV. Like there's a section where you can have your, you know, how how fast you are over your 40 yard dash, all that sort of stuff you can put in. But coaches, you know, aren't really looking to see if you can bench 100 
kgs or pounds sorry 250 pounds that you know they're looking to see if you can if you can pass your rugby skills basically so if it's a training session and you're doing some skills yeah and, and maybe you don't have much footage i would 100 percent some footage is better than none footage that's for sure so or no footage so, mm. um so yeah i would definitely we, we've had a, a we had one kid um and we did some scrum stuff uh, and we put that on the highlight reel because the season hadn't quite started and there was no real live scrums to see and and then some of this old stuff that he'd sent the camera was too far away that you couldn't really see anything so we just wanted to give the coach an idea of how he he does his crouch to bind how he sets at scrum so we we did put some stuff in there so th there is a place for it but um I, I would say most coaches prefer game footage right so what was that like with a scrum machine or was it w against other people like how, both, how would yeah. that work it was a bit of oh, okay yeah we're lucky to at san diego we, we have a lot of the high schools and the colleges that come to us we have a a, a pneumatic scrum machine that actually moves and can push oh. back against you it's it's pretty pretty good little system so as a and we're trying to get as many kids to use it as well because obviously the the, the better they can scrum now at a young age the better they'll they'll progress in, the, in their rugby career. So yeah, we just filmed them doing some stuff on the scrum machine and then actually some live stuff as well. So um, for his highlight reel, yeah. Okay, so tell me a little bit about, okay, so let's, so we've got it, we've got this student, um, puts together their highlight film, they send it off and coaches are like, this is great, keep us posted. Um, I feel like a lot of students, once they do one highlight film, they're kind of like, they kind of stop. Um, I mean, what do you think about continuing, continuing to get filmed, continuing to do highlights? Like, you know what I mean? Like as they go to different tournaments or more games or do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. what oh, do you no, think I about think that? Definitely. Uh, the good thing is, yeah, the, the more footage you can have, I, I, I think the better, um, and then you're always, you know, you're always striving to get better and you will always get better as a player the longer you play. So more often than not, the the the, the last film that you have is is probably there's some better clips in there. So it's always good to keep updating, updating your CV. Um, I, I would say, yeah, definitely 100%. Is, is if, if you, I just think, and the other thing I would say on that, that I was just thinking there is that it's, it's also a very good idea to, to, write down who you're playing against and what competition you're playing in for, for a coach so he can tell what level as well that you're you're actually playing at um and that's that's the sort of thing you can do in the cv as well as you can just add, you can put in who you're playing against what level the college all all that sort of stuff which is which is always good for a coach to know you know where you're playing and, and who you're playing against because like you say if if a kid's playing and he's he, they're winning 150 nil it's um you know a coach is going to think hold on a minute but so yeah i just think it's always good to to update your cv as often as possible mm -hmm. and and also let people know what competition you're playing in and age grade and all the rest of that stuff so. yeah absolutely so i mean i think what you're touching on and i i remind um, families all the time um you know coaches are not they don't have the budget to fly around to multiple games and tournaments and things like that so like it is your job to um, kind of get your face in front of them you know so you're not going to bug them if you send say um, a highlight with games in the spring of your sophomore year and then you played summer seven so then you send another one at the end of summer and then you send another update you know it's kind of I would say provide more allow the coach to decide, you know, if they want to watch it, great. If they don't, like, it's kind of on them, but you've kind of done everything you can to give them more to work with, you know, versus, oh, I, you know, I sometimes have students say, well, I, I want to wait. Like, I don't want to put together a film now because I'm going to play in that tournament in the summer. I'll do it in the summer. It's like, no, like continue to give them stuff. They need to see you. They need to remember this is Johnny, man, he, he is on it. He's sending us film every three months. They get to see some growth. They get to see that, oh, this is how he was scrumming in March. Wow. Look at him scrumming in August. So that's good too. Even if you're like, you know, I guess I, I get a lot of, oh, no, I'm going to do it in fall season because I'll be better then, you know, instead of just the more the better, right? Like that's, if that's the thing that someone takes away from watching this is get, you know, get the most film um, that they can get to send to 
to send to these coaches. Coaches are always saying, film, film, film. Like we want to get that. Um, okay. We're, we're trying to keep these webinars to around 30 minutes. So I'm just going to kind of put it out there and see if anyone has any questions. Um, they want to ask Scott directly. So I'll put it out there. You can go ahead and put that in. Um, what would you say, and maybe this is a tip for college coaches who are maybe reviewing film for the first time. Are there any tips you might have for what, I mean, you've kind of touched on it a little bit, but anything specific about what you're looking for um, with specific positions or anything like that? Because I think in watching film for a pro team is probably very different, um, but I certainly have some coaches that are in new varsity programs. They're now in charge. They've never kind of had to do recruitment. You know, how, how, how does that look like for them maybe? Yeah, well, I mean, let's let's run down from position specific. That's that's the key. Is like depending on who you're looking it, looking at, which position you're looking at, it depends on what you're looking for. So props, for example, ones and threes. You you, you definitely want to start with scrum, um, and that's you know how the, the the how do they bind when they come to to scrums? How do I'm sorry? How do they set up to start with when they come down? How do they they bind? Have they got good explosion on the hit? How are, how is their footwork? That's key, um, and that's so that says position specific. When and then lineouts, do they? How do they lift? Do they lift well? Uh, and then basically you're going to defense. So you've got tackle and then carries uh, in attack and defense, uh, and then just a little bit work rate around around the ball would be for them. For for hookers, hookers I would say very similar at scrum. But then the most the key for a hooker is how do they throw the ball into a lineout? Because I mean, most mm. of the lineouts we lose, especially at professional level, it's it's because the, the throw wasn't accurate, uh, and it's a, it's a huge mm. skill, and everyone's looking for a hooker that can throw in. Um, so that that's the main the main skill. So like if if you're in a highlight reel for a hooker, you make sure you put a couple of lineouts with very good throws, top of the jump, guys are catching it above their head. Um, that's that's key for the for the hookers for second rows mm. again it's line outs how do they jump the, the speed across the ground at line out time their speed into the air um how how good they're above the head because it's it's a huge skill but the ball above the head catching kickoffs catching line outs is a very it's a very good skill and it's something that coaches are looking for um and then again then you then you go into defense and attack and and their work rate Number eight, ball carrying ability is huge. Again, with everything else, defense and attack. Uh, sixes, you want to, most sixes nowadays are very good in the air. So you, you want to get some stuff in there for lineouts. Uh, and again, footwork in the contact and then repeat work rate, make, making sure they're doing, you know, they're getting 10 tackles, 10 carries a game. That's something coaches are looking for. Um, mm -hmm. Sevens, uh, a big one for the sevens, uh, the same as every other forward, but the sevens is their connection between the backs and the forwards. You know, are they getting to breakdowns quick enough? Are they they are they the connection between the backs and the forwards? That's what coaches are looking for. Um, and then we get to the backs. Hmm. For me, nines, the, their position specific skills would be pass and and their their kick on the high ball, um, and then again their work rate uh, and then defense carry tens same their kicking ability um, and then their ability to run a game. So, and they're passing off both hands, making sure you get, when, when you do a highlight reel, you get passes off left and right hand so the coach can see how, if, if there's any work to be done there. Um, and then centers, they're, they're pretty much the same. Most coaches are looking for how they carry into contact and how they can defend because it's 13 is one of the hardest positions in 15s anyway to defend. So they, they want to make sure that you're able to, to kind of run that defensive line so how, and how you tackle. Wingers, obviously, uh, finishing ability, footwork in contact, uh, and defensively how you work, because obviously sometimes wingers have to come up and down into the line depending on where the ball's going. So all that sort of stuff, which is which is hard to show in a highlight reel, but um, you just want to make sure they know how to tackle and carry, and then in the full games you'll get that. And then for a fullback, I think the, the keys are – aerial skills again obviously you're, you're getting a lot of kicks um and then being able to kick yourself 
and then being able to kind of run that defense um verbally as well because they're they're the guys that they're, they're they're furthest back in the in the defensive setup they're the guys that can see everything so they're telling people what to do showing it's all you know communication skills for them are key and again not something you'd really put in the highlight highlight reel but when a coach is looking at a full game that's what they'll be looking at communication yeah. I love it. I love it. I love those like little tips that I hope everyone's taking away of um, the idea that, you know, for example, with the scrum half, I've seen some that still turn like they're only right-handed. So they still have to turn all the way around to pass, right? So being able to see that someone can do those nice long passes with both hands, like things like that, or when they're approaching a breakdown, they're already setting up, they're already thinking, which way am I going to go? They don't get up there and then decide, like they're not slowing the ball down, right? By like getting there, thinking about it, looking around, like by then the ball's already like, it, it, you've already slowed everything, you know, the defense is already there. So I think some of those things being able to show that are they already you know what their mental skills are of like going into this game of making those decisions how fast is this game going um i've seen some film where you can tell this is say for example a southern california game where it's really fast and then you see one from the midwest which is really potentially slower because of weather field conditions things like that so just seeing how uh, players are adjusting to the weather um that's helpful too you know if, if you're playing in a lot of rain um or snow that's going to affect the way you're playing and how you handle some of those things too um great um so i don't have any more questions here uh, scott are there any final thoughts for uh for families to kind of think about that we didn't cover today and of course we'll put out all of your contact information um you know, for, for families to reach out to you. Is there a time that is optimal for them to start sending you film or anything you're noticing? Is there too early? Is there, you know what I mean, too late? Anything like that? Uh, no, no, it's, it's, it's um, yeah, any any film, any time is, is good, yeah. There's, there's no optimal time. I'm just, yeah, it should, like I say, once, or not like I say, when we get the film, it normally takes anywhere from seven to 10 days for, for the turnaround more often than not it's a lot quicker than that but we just like to say seven to ten days to be to be very sure and then yeah the, the, the one thing i would say to finish is yeah you know there's a lot of pressure trying to do all this stuff and it's not it's not meant to be pressure you know like the film and stuff maybe you're not always going to get it right but there's always ways that we can tidy things up and make things look good but the, for, for me the most important thing about rugby is that we just enjoy it you know, we enjoy playing it. We enjoy watching our, our kids, son, daughter, having fun, enjoying what, what I think is a really good game for, for personal development as a as a person, uh, as a human. Um, and just, yeah, make sure you enjoy it and don't put too much pressure on yourself to be awesome. You know, just yeah. like I say, a coach is going to know straight away once he sees your footage what you can do. Um and if you're enjoying it, that's something coaches are looking for because they, they want people to enjoy it. If you're going to do it for a living, it's 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 good to enjoy what you're doing. So and and I yeah. do, and that's what I'm saying. I like I want to pass that on to other people to to just have enjoyment and do what you're doing. Um, because I think it goes a long way to having a happy, a happy life. Right. Yeah, no, I love it. And and to, to finish up too, I think what you just brought up too is um thinking about students already picturing okay if I do this it'll make my highlight reel maybe it's it looks good for you but doesn't look good for the team or something like that like there are some things where it's like even if it's going to be on film you have to think about how it looks in a larger picture and I, I think what, I, what I'm saying is like are there moments where there's a clear two-on-one you could make the pass to your teammate and they would score but you want that highlight clip of you you know kind of making a bad decision of running someone over and actually end up losing the ball because you're already thinking about oh this is going to be good for myself for my highlight film and then it ends up it actually ends up not being a, a good thing so like if the film happens great but like i think if you only you're focusing on your team plan what your coach has put out to you you know kind of focusing on what your team needs your film is going to be great, you know, instead of the other way around of how do I make good film of, I want to, you know, make this big juke. I want to do this or that. And then it ends up 
being nothing, you know, because <laughs> then it's all about you, right? And I think some students are thinking, oh, how's it going to look on Instagram? How's it going to do this? Focus on your team, you know, and like you said, have fun. Like if those moments happen, great. But those are normally when you have those awesome moments when people are just having fun. You can tell. You can tell when the players are having fun and just like supporting each other versus when you see that there's just all this pressure and they're trying to like make something happen. You can also see that too. Um, so Scott, thank you so, so much for your time. I so appreciate it. And I know the families out there appreciate your, um, all of your insight. Um, as always, we'll put out your information so people can contact you directly if they have some questions, they wanna start sending you film and I'm sure they'll have a conversation with you about how to start. Um, and good luck to everyone as you head into your spring season. We're really excited to see some of that fun film out there and uh, we will see you soon. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. Bye.